As a storyteller myself, K-pop concepts have been getting increasingly more complex. We've had the AI concept from Espo. We've had this fantasy concept from Enhypen. And now we have this crazy dystopian world from our boys at ATs. If you're not familiar with the concept of the World EP1 movement, it's set in a dystopian world where the goal of society is to avoid pain. And they do this by becoming more alike and more uniform, getting rid of any uniqueness at all. People in the society are controlled by yellow devices in their ears and they have no idea what's going on, essentially being brain. And that right there is a key line that's going to come back later. The whole concept reminded me of a dystopian novel called The Giver, in which there's a society that appears to be utopian, but actually turns out to be dystopian because pain is taken away by making everybody the same. If we look at the cover, we have this old man, and he has an uncanny resemblance to the guy that's helping this group called the Gorillas, ATs, take down this regime. It's funny that they're actually, it looks like their society is called Strictland. <laughs> This is basically the concept that was covered in the first two trailers, which were really, really amazing quality. The one critique I have from an editing and a production perspective is that the sound is not that good. I think in general, the sound is a little bit too minimalistic, meaning that there's just a lot of effects over the voices. There's not enough hits and booms. They're so proud of themselves. Maybe this is just a difference so of the way that American trailers are edited versus trailers in the Eastern Hemisphere. But these trailers were made by filmmakers that primarily make music videos. And when you make music videos, you don't have to worry about sound hardly at all because the music is the sound. All you're doing is creating visuals for it. And I always say on this channel, sound is 80% of a viewer's experience. So if we wanted to have a more emotional, a more intense trailer experience, they would have spent a lot more time on the sound and it would have been way higher quality. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to point this out too. This little device here is the top of a Zoom microphone. But honestly, only filmmakers and people that use those microphones often will notice that. You can literally see that a lightsaber was made out of an old camera flash attachment. So using camera and film equipment as props is not a new idea. So there's the whole setup of the world that we're diving into with this music video, Gorilla. So let's get into some editing. Hi, my name is Jordan Orm. I'm a professional film editor for artists like these guys. So it's interesting. Oh my God, that scared the poop out of me. The reason that these edits work so good and they're so impactful is because we had a super long shot to lull us to sleep. And once the audience is lulled to sleep, you can just bang, smack them. One thing that is so important guys, you can't have visuals without audio complementing it. So we have this huge static sound that really makes those flashes feel more intense to us. We have almost silence and then crazy noises. In order to create these visuals that we see, it's just really crunchy footage, all turned red by turning off all of the other colors in the channel. And then we add some film burns over it and it really gives us those flashes. And we're getting right into the story, bro. Right into the story. Here comes ATs. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't like that first cut. I would probably honestly give a note because the music comes in and then we just jump in. And that was one of the most jarring cuts I've ever seen. I think the other thing is that the blimps change position. Not only is this a jump cut, it's a lapse in time. But the matching, oh! Oh my God. Dude, we are jumping into this world. So ATs is this group, they're called the Gorillas, and they're trying to overthrow the government to tell people that you don't have to be the same, it's okay to be different and be crazy, be wild. <laughs> we have some major after effects graphic novel goodness. Let's get into it. First of all, our boy spins and then we turn into a graphic novel. All it is is this shot right here and then it's inverted so the white turns black and the black turns white. You can see that we have the small graphic novel dots which is called the halftone effect. But in addition to that, every two frames or so, they're adding a texture on top of it which really, really takes it to another level. I'm gonna attach a really cool tutorial that I found on After Effects about how to create footage into graphic novels. That was probably my favorite cut of the section when he spins. Oh, that spin is so delicious. What a nice match cut. 
And not only did they just do the halftone effect, it almost looks like they took every frame into Photoshop and added different textures and distorted their figure. This could be done in After Effects or Photoshop frame by frame, but all I have to say is they put in a lot of work for these effects and it looks phenomenal. So it looks like they hijacked their uh, their screen. Imagine you're just like being brainwashed. Oh, okay. You guys hearing this? It's kind of a bop. I didn't know we got 80s music videos in class. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're loving it. I kind of wish they were headbanging. Okay, did you see how they added a camera shake right when the screaming started? That was the first time we heard actual screaming in this video. The visuals matched it. And then to turn that into an amazing transition, the subject starts ahead screen left and then changes direction heading screen right. And the next camera movement is super fast screen left to screen right. Then we have a wipe using the frame of the door to get us into the next shot. That is epic. Ooh. Ooh, another camera wipe. Another thing that I love is you actually don't need to have these crazy visual effect transitions created to make a transition happen in the viewer's mind. Right here, we just have a quick camera shot into the back of the van, and then we just match the camera movement into another shot within a set probably. And the fact that those camera movements seamlessly match, in our mind, it looks like we're going through the glass of the van. Establishing location that he's inside of a van is so important. And the use of that screen for a transition, so good. I'm gonna be honest, I feel like the chorus was really anticlimactic when they were cutting to the dancing here. I don't know what it is, it's just very slow, smooth camera movements. The dancing is crazy, but the camera doesn't fully capture it. I'm assuming that the entertainment company, the label, they were like, hey guys, dancing is so important in K-pop that the first time that the chorus is played, we have to see the dancing so that people can learn the dance. But I'm gonna be honest, these shots, they felt anticlimactic. They didn't really have the oomph that I was looking for. Usually you want the chorus to lift in energy and it felt like the chorus actually went down in energy. This is a shot that was in the trailers, which is how they're actually speeding up the recording of the message that is being played to the people getting brainwashed. And that actually distorts the message, messes it up, so the brainwashing stops. Ooh! Dude, do you see how intense these shots are? So I totally think that they should have switched it, and you should have played this part first. I'm gonna edit it so you guys can see this. And that's honestly probably how it was originally edited, but the entertainment company said, I know it actually feels better and looks better as a music video to do it this way, but we have to put the dance first. It's so interesting how politics and just other aspects of the music industry really influence how the music video is edited. Like, look how intense this looks. They're like just out of focus and in focus. It looks so crazy. That was a nice place cut. That was good. Oh! Oh! That zoom! So they're on a fisheye lens, which means that it's a circle and the edges are black. But they actually zoom in and let the shot fill up the whole screen. Sometimes this is what you do as the default shot because you don't want to see the edges. It's kind of an imperfection that doesn't look good. Whenever you're on a fisheye lens, zooming looks so good. Look at this hidden cut. I didn't even notice this until I frame by frame. So it's actually not a zoom in and zoom out. It's a zoom in, cut, zoom out. Cut and zoom out at the same time. Oh, that's dope. Oh, verse two is too hard. Bro, 
I am so upset. Look at these. Look at these images. I am so obsessed with this graphic novel texture look. This is something that I haven't really seen too much, and it looks so dope, bro. This flashing that we see in this scene right here, that is actually created by the editor. You can see that they rotoscoped him out right here, especially if you look at his hair, and they just darkened the background. And so this wasn't a light that was flashing on set, but by listening to the song, hearing the hi-hats, that t -t 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 -t, they created a lighting effect in post that didn't even exist on set. Upside down! Dude, it's so good. This is the best part, honestly. It gets so intense that he head bangs the lens and they added a crack. Like, what if that was real? It looks so real. But even if it's not real, all you have to do is get a little glass effect, like from Envato Elements. I use Envato Elements all the time. Links in the description. And then just overlay it and put it on the blend mode of screen. And boom, you got a, a, a glass effect. If it gets too intense in front of the lens, now you know. Let's just break the lens virtually. <laughs> Ooh. I love this. Look how long of a shot this was. I love varying shot lengths. You know, everybody loves plot twists in their favorite shows and movies, right? And when you vary the shot length in a music video, it's like a plot twist. It's doing something that's unexpected because normally, what do we do editors? We, we like, cut. cut. But sometimes the best editing is when you don't cut at all. This is a 10 second shot in the middle of a music video, which honestly <laughs> never happens. It's a perfect time too, because the beat cuts out. It's just the, the hi-hat and snare. Everything's slower here, as far as intensity. Ooh, they're kind of swaggy with that dance move. Okay, we're getting into some story now. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, look at this VFX. They have no shadows. But you know, it looks all right. <laughs> all right, back to this. We have our actor. You can see he's wearing a glove here. And then our next shot, this is our band member. Forgive me, I don't know all their names. They just rotoscoped out his head and just slapped it on top. And then they use the arm right here. It's very specific the way that they have to have their arm across their body and covering their entire head because that's what helps the masking. The camera angle and everything is very, very intentional here. And when he pulls his arm up, up, you can see that they used his hand and then they masked out his face right here and then right on this frame they transferred to the actual shot it's honestly a really cool trick it looks so good okay so when they were in the room with all the microphones they were singing this song they were saying music is a weapon hooligan living with the eyes of emotion closed we got to have emotion guys we can't be emotionless that's what makes us human and so they infiltrate it get on the air and now their message is being blasted to the world which is kind of cool because that's actually what's happening in real life. They're being able to reach millions with a message of hope and inspiration, which is honestly why I take speaking for editors all over the world very, very seriously. I just love the whole concept of this. It's awesome. Ooh. Oh, that was a nice hitting cut. That was delicious. Check this out. Right there, we zoom in really quick and transition because we just have crazy motion blur right in front of the lens. It's a perfect time to cut. Our human brain can't comprehend what's happening in this frame and this frame, so when you cut them together, it's seamless. Ooh! So good. Ooh! Again, the editor with the flashing. Oh, that's dope. It kind of looks like they're recreating this World War II picture from Iwo Jima. I could be wrong, but this is where my brain goes when I see this image. They're going to war, but look what's below them. Music. They're using music as their weapon of choice to try to make the world a better place. That's pretty dope. I love the film grain, the film burns to help blend the shots together. Again, they did that transition, the same one. Bro, oh, he's wearing like shoulder pads. <laughs> oh, they got a blimp with the ATs logo, baby. And the editor made sure that we saw that. See how the editor decided to punch in? We hijacked a freaking blimp, a spiky blimp, baby.
Ooh. Oh, they're spreading the propaganda, the message. Gorilla, no more lies. Break that wall. <laughs> I'm getting so hyped from this, bro. And they're just going in and out of focus constantly. And that just adds to the chaos along with the camera shape too. It just, they're like, how can we make it as crazy as possible? Woo! I'm also really loving this VHS transition. The reason it's cool is because it actually displaces what's below it. A lot of times if you just take a VHS transition or filter and you slap it on top, it doesn't actually affect or distort the image below it. But if you look closely, the lines are actually getting blurred and distorted. And that is some good After Effects work. Woo! Dude, this red scene is sick. Oh, dang. Somebody from their brainwash facility ventured into the outside world. So back in the trailer, our boy said,